the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Lift your hands and bless Him. Tell Him, Lord, I worship You. Just bless the name of the Lord. Mighty is His presence in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Just bless Him. Bless Him in other tongues. He's faithful. Bless His name. Down at Your feet, O oh Lord, is the most high. It's in Your presence, Lord. I see your face. I see your face. And you sing it one more time down at your feet. Down at your feet. Oh, oh, oh. It's the most I play. In your presence, in your presence. Shut up, 
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. It remains a privilege every time we gather before you. Lord, I thank you for your people. They have come from all over. They will never go back to sin. Because the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Thank you, Lord, because you will grant liberty tonight. Let the oppressed be free. Let the sick be healed. Let those who are confused find direction. I honor the name of the Lord. And I bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please walk to ten people and just greet them. Ten people. Lord, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, bless our hearts tonight. Holy Spirit, we will never be tired of calling upon your name. Because Jesus left you with us to teach us. And when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide us into all truth. He will cause us to see and to know, and to comprehend spiritual things. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity. Lord, we bless you. You are the spirit of the living God. Are not ashamed to declare how helpless we are without you. You are the fountain of wisdom. It's in your light that we see light. We bless the name of the Lord for his glorious presence in this place. The presence that can change. You have changed the stories of people. Lord, day and night we hear testimonies of the hand of God. The wonder working power you have made sinners to come into the fold. Many have been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. You have anointed men and women. You have broken habits. You have broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. You have opened for us the two leaf gates and caused us to walk in freedom. See what you've done with our lives, oh God. You have taken the ordinary things and you have made wonders out of our lives. Lord, we acknowledge the way you transform people in this place. It's mighty. It can only happen by the Spirit. You're giving many testimonies of transformation, healing definition of their lives you are setting men apart for the things that you will be doing Lord we bless you we bless you we bless you we bless you these are not the works of men it is the presence of the living God walking in the midst of his people and so we choose to say thank you hallelujah I bless your name and I pray that tonight it will not be different. Change somebody. Your people have come from their homes, from other states. Except you help us tonight, we cannot help ourselves. But we trust the power of your spirit, that great spirit of the living God. Open to us the bread of the spirit grant us access into the deep things of the world. 
let the word equip us prepare us separate us make a wonder out of our lives we are available we give you all the praise for the glory of your name that Jesus will be glorified in our lives we are not interested in shadows we want the substance you are worthy worthy of my praise you're the king of kings lord of lords this is our prayer lord let your kingdom reign in my life adonai You're the Lord of Lords. Tonight, let your kingdom reign in our hearts. Adonai. of God you are the spirit of God 
I feel your touch in my life Holy Ghost Comfort her Make my life Comfortable Teach her Teach me All I need to know You are the Spirit of God You are the Spirit of God I feel your touch in my life Oh you are the spirit of God you are the spirit of God I feel, I feel your, your touch in my life, life. Oh, 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 oh. I will sing of the wonders of your love I will sing of your love I will sing of the wonders of your love I will forever sing your praise Listen, your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word that's why your oh lord i will forever sing your praise your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word that's why i will forever sing your praise i will see i will see of the wonders of your life I will sing out for joy I will sing of the wonders of your work and I will forever sing your praise Bless you. Let the name of the Lord be exalted. Blessed is the Lord Most High. Let the bride of the Lord say, Come. We will give you no rest, O Lord, until you inhabit the praises of your people and you turn your Jerusalem into a holy place. Just soak in his glory for a minute. His mighty presence. God is healing, healing sicknesses, the healing anointing in this place. Shh. 
שלום, 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 ג'רוסלם. שלום, 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 שלום. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem. Shalom, shalom. Koinonia Peace be to you When Messiah comes to take us home May his praise be found in you Shalom, shalom Jerusalem yeah. I prophesy peace to you I prophesy peace to you When Messiah comes to take us home May His praise be found in you I speak to every storm in this place Shalom, Shalom, Jerusalem. Peace be to you. Now that Messiah is in this place, he's come to take it away. Let his praise be found in you. I'm prophesying to you. Shalom. Shalom. Koinonia. The bride of Christ. Peace be to you. Peace be to you. Let this be a place of peace. Let it be a place of power. Let it be a place of breakthrough. Let it be a place of intimacy. his name you may not realize what has happened to you
bless you, Jesus. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, Jehovah. We have touched the end of ourselves. Take over now, Jehovah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. So take over, take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Can you personalize it? Take over, Lord. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, yeah. take over. We have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. the voices. Sing it from your heart. Come on. Take over. Take over. Lord, we have come to the end of ourselves. Take over. When you come to the end of yourself, then you will see his glory. It's a powerful song of dedication. You will always rejoice when you come to the end of yourself. That's when flesh dies and you release the spirit. Hey, take over. Yeah. Lord, we have come to the end of ourselves. Take over. Take over. We have come to the end. about to share in these few minutes i pray from my heart that it will change you and set you on fire i pray that it will change you i pray that it will change you and do something remarkable in your life hallelujah praise the lord let's get to the word of god bless you it's good to have everyone around Make sure you have something to write. The presence of God is mighty in this place. Hallelujah. I want to teach on something very powerful. I want to share with you a very big secret tonight. And for as many who will consider it to be valuable I pray that many years from now it will make you a sign and a wonder because I am aware by now that not everybody is really interested in the things of the spirit just leave her alone hallelujah there will be a lot of impartations tonight because of what I'm about to teach hallelujah I want you to be sensitive Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? And then you'll understand that His presence is here. Open your eyes. If you open your ears, 
then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Hallelujah. I want to teach tonight on the price for an extraordinary anointing. Never, never trivialize what you are about to hear. I'm here to preach my heart to you tonight. And I pray that somebody will take this seriously. May this message set somebody on fire. May this message answer the question somebody's heart. The price for an extraordinary anointing. Hmm. Hallelujah. I've always wondered why certain people in this life seemed to be unusually extraordinary. Hallelujah. Why certain sportsmen were better than others. Why certain musicians and artists were better than others? Why certain preachers, men and women of God? What brought the power and the anointing of the Spirit so mightily upon their lives? When you read through church history, you will see an archive of men that walked like gods upon the earth. Now there were others who did nice, great things little thing here and there but there were others who were too extraordinary to be neglected they shook cities single-handedly there was there was such a degree of the demonstration of the holy spirit upon their lives hallelujah and i made up my mind years ago that my life was not going to be extraordinary my life was not going to be normal sorry I made up my mind years ago that I was going to live an extremely extraordinary life. Hallelujah. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if you have done these things with the people that have gone ahead of us, and yet you say there is a generation that will do more, I want to be that generation. Every time I picked up my Bible and I read the things that the Word of God said would happen, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he also do and greater works. And I carried my Bible and said, Lord, do you really mean this? Hallelujah. And I began to study the life of extraordinary people. I have spent a major part of my life studying extraordinary people in every area of life every area finance ministry leadership what made them so extraordinary because i don't want to be a mediocre jesus was born in a manger but when he was leaving heaven there was a crowd to celebrate his departure And I'm very disturbed, and I must say this, at the complacency that is upon especially preachers in the body of Christ. There is a very low standard that many men and women of God, especially around this country, have set for themselves. There is no pressure to go the extra mile and do amazing things for the kingdom. Hallelujah. When I listen to certain preachers, the presence of God that came out of their lives were amazing. It was compelling. You could not deny that these people knew the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Very, very powerful. And one time I listened to William Branham when I listened to his message, I was shaking. And the Holy Spirit told me, Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. 
What kind of anointing did men like Elisha carry that although they were dead, a dead body meandered that place and suddenly jacked up? Are there such people in the earth today? Are you listening to me? Am I challenging somebody? For desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing in. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing on. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. Help me sing. There's gotta be more than this. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. Cause I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. Listen, there's got to be more than what we're watching on our television. Are you listening to me? There's got to be more than what we celebrate as ministry and power today. There's got to be more. This cannot be all of God. Certain people have become examples to let us know that there are possibilities that are obtained in God. It's just that the standard is high. The Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He lives in a hill and whoever will climb there will access some things. He said he shall receive a reward from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. I studied Ezekiel 47 and it challenged me. The Bible says, out of the east side of the temple, a river came out. And he said, an angel measured a thousand cubits. And it was to my ankles. That's a level. That's a measure of the anointing. But he didn't stop there. He said he measured another thousand cubits. And then it was to my knees. And the man would have chosen to stop there. But he said, I will go for more. And he measured a thousand cubits. And it was to his loins. And he said, although this is great, by now you are a celebrity, you are on every television, but he said, there is still more. And the Bible says he measured a thousand cubits and it was a river, a, an overflowing river. And the Bible says, wherever that river went, the fish that was dead would come alive. Hallelujah. My anthem every time is that there is more. There is more. If you're a lukewarm person who does not have any pressure to press, you won't be my friend. You won't like me. My life will offend you. The price for an extraordinary anointing. I made certain vows with my life that I was going to leave a mark upon this earth before I go to be with the Lord or He comes to find me working. I made up my mind that I was not just going to be that preacher with a nice congregation and just having people and join the rat race of preachers fighting themselves and doing things as if the anointing has finished. Quarreling and writing things about them. No! That kind of life is for people who have refused to press higher. Hallelujah. See, let me tell you something. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's energy. The anointing is God's ability to do work. Just like in physics, we define energy or we define power as the ability to do work per time. That's the definition of the anointing. The power of the Holy Ghost resident in a man that causes the man to produce extraordinary results. The Bible says in Isaiah 20, 10, 27, it says, It shall come to pass in that day. Which day? The day you are interested enough to enter that dimension with the Spirit. That the burden shall be lifted from off thy neck and the yoke from thy shoulder. And it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. There are many preachers that go into ministry without the anointing. Many people trying to work for God. Many people trying to be great without the anointing. 
You have no ministry without the anointing. The anointing of the spirit is God's agency. His ability that can be resident in a man. Causing that man to do extraordinary things. And if that ability is not in you, you cannot pretend it's there when it's not there. Because it speaks. Hallelujah. Every time I watch television, I get blessed, but I get disturbed in my spirit. When I see the satisfaction that is upon men of God as they preach, in my mind I'm saying, is this, was this the whole vision that they saw when they began with God? If no, what happened on the way? And then one time the Lord began to speak to me about the extraordinary anointing. And the Lord told me something that shocked me. He said, son, it is not up to me. It is entirely up to you to determine how far you want to go in the anointing. Many people think it's just God. He brings it whenever he wants. And if God likes you, he will just give it to you. If anybody has preached that to you, I'm telling you right now, right now, that is not true. Psalms 89 says, I have found my servant David. He had to make himself available. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. Hallelujah. Every time we watch extraordinary people during the Olympic, the attention of the whole world were on a few who did extraordinary things. Their age, their gender, their race, their background, notwithstanding. The world has always stood in honor of extraordinary people. Ordinary people have not done anything to the world. When they give people Nobel Prize, it's because they did extraordinary things. Hallelujah. And I want to challenge you tonight that there is a dimension in God that you can press into and you will access not just an anointing, an extraordinary anointing. There are many people who claim to be prophets in this country and you see that they, they are really called but they have not contended to those dimensions in God. They are prophets who look like pastors or deacons. No pressure to contend for the deep things of the spirit. I was studying the gospels and I started crying. You know why I cried? Because in Bible times, all people needed to do was to locate Jesus Christ or any environment where he was around. Whether or not they will be healed was not the issue. They knew that once they saw Jesus Christ, that was it. Powerful dimension of grace. At what level in the church will people say, all I need to do, take me to that place. When I get there, I will find God. When I get there, no matter what the problem is, there must be a solution. Right now, to get to a place where a man of God is, is only the first question answered. The second question is to hope. Hope that at least God will attend to me. And every time this is my cry, I say, Lord, don't send me if I'm going to be an ordinary person. Hallelujah. Someone spoke to me one day and said, Josh, I think you need to go on air. I said, me? I will never go on air until I have a message for the body of Christ. Are you hearing me? I'm not going to go on air and have somebody scroll my channel and say, wow, he's a nice man of God next. No, no, no. There's got to be something extraordinary. This is what I, I made up my mind that will never officially begin to record koinonia messages until there was something that was substantiable enough for the body of Christ to have. There are many people writing books and tapes that are empty. They have no power and no ability. They are just psychological jargons. No power to change people. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Bible says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says that he had the spirit without measure. And he went about doing good. And healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. Acts 10.38 I 
I made up my mind that I was going to explore. See, can I tell you the truth? As far as I'm concerned, I've not started ministry yet. I feel very sad when I see a lot of people. They don't say I've been five years in ministry, seven years. I tell them, keep quiet. What is ministry? Ministry is representing God, being an ambassador. How much? What have you done? What mark have you made? When I begin ministry, the world will know. The Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Many people just get up, they start churches, they gather people, they have no message. They have no nothing. What do you have that has not been heard before? The Bible says there is a path which no fowl knoweth and a path which the feet of the lion has not trodden. Many men of God, what is happening in this country is just a repetition, copy and paste of spiritual things. There is no new. But the Bible says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. See, behold, I do a new thing. Hallelujah. Nelson Mandela became sick and he kept the world at a standstill. Christians, non-Christian, and everybody was praying. When Obama came, he had to go and visit him. Listen, this is, this is amazing. What made him an extraordinary leader? My, my first challenge for you tonight is that you must refuse to be ordinary in life. I want to challenge you. You must refuse. It's a determination. It's a decision. I refuse to be extraordinary call it pride i don't care hallelujah there is a level where you can get hold of an extraordinary anointing it will produce an extraordinary ministry it will produce an extraordinary life kenneth hagin of blessed memory a man who lived an extraordinary life he had such a, a mighty anointing upon him William Branham, I watched the video of Jaco, and they brought a lady who had cancer. Are you following me now? It was it was a growth, it was swollen. I watched it, it's not like they told me. This guy held it and peeled it away. He was even sitting on a chair, he held it, peeled the cancer away. No blood, he was showing people. What is our boasting? What is our bragging for? I made up my mind I will never officially celebrate my birthday until I have a reason to celebrate. Birthdays is not a celebration of the day you were born. It was a celebration of, for what you are doing, what you were called to do, what you are living for. Are you listening to me? When I watch the videos of these people, I, I get broken. Mighty men! William Branham would move and because of the degree of anointing that was upon him, a hollow will move together with him. Ketun Kuman was so full of the Holy Ghost. She carried the anointing to a point that one time on stage she had crossed the stage yet she was still floating. She didn't even realize it. Who through faith subdued kingdoms? Who are these men? Who are these strange breed of people that defied the ordinary status quo of their days and told themselves they were going to press the difference between extraordinary listen to me please the difference between extraordinary and ordinary is that word extra hallelujah every time i want to counsel people i just say lord are these people going to gather and I'll just waste their time. Or will they really receive something? Can I tell you something? The body of Christ is so frustrated. Many people are frustrated. Because preachers make a lot of mouth about things they have no anointing to defend. Hallelujah. A lot of preachers come and we brag and we make all kinds of noise. Oh, if God doesn't heal you, you don't have faith. Blah, 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 blah. And now the sick people come and they go back. And then they run to herbalists. And we have, we carry our big mouths and we criticize them. 
when the herbalist in a village is doing what a preacher has refused to do and people are desperate for help they will do anything including leaving your church or your ministry and they will find solutions are you listening to me jesus climbed the mountain a crowd followed him there jesus went to the wilderness a crowd followed him there he was in a room the bible says a whole city came and filled there men who knew that they were going to get substance there is a lot of wastage happening in the body of christ men and women of god just joking around and playing around and the the circumference of all what we call anointing the moment a man of god's dream is to get to the point where you can touch somebody or blow air and somebody falls it's enough demonstration to people that you are anointed people fall down get up and clean themselves nothing changes hallelujah there are certain meetings in my life i entered some of those meetings just once but i will never forget hallelujah never forget T.L. Osborne entered only one meeting one meeting of William Branham just one and it set him on fire forever just one I told God I said Lord the deadline for transformation in any life in Koinonia is two meetings two meetings every time I pray I said Lord let it not be that somebody will come for Koinonia at least twice and not be changed and you ask the person how was service say wow it was nice but that somebody will come and at the end of it he cannot even talk the person is just on his way going and you're saying what happened he said i can't i can't begin to describe the impartation i don't know if it was impartation i got or revelation i got I don't know i know that i got something you'll be like a snake that swallowed something else he can't move until after some days where you know that god is in this place there are people seated here who are sick there are people who are oppressed and we men of god feel it's not an issue and and you know shame on we preachers to an extent that whenever you see people being delivered and free men of god begin to get angry and criticize this is how much we are not even interested in the agenda of god someone gets free someone gets delivered see let me tell you something i made up my mind the bible says he who walks with the wise shall be what he who walks with the great shall be what he who walks with the extraordinary shall be what? I love everybody, but I will not follow everybody. I am determined to make sure that a lot will be done for the kingdom of God in my lifetime. This is why there is no satisfaction. I've had one or two awards that were given to me. You will never find them on my table. Those things are deceitful. Very deceitful. Award that a few people just came together and said, take, you did this and that. You now place it and you are smiling and it's lying to you. See, when I was in secondary school, it was in a local government where, you know, many people were not even serious with their studies. So we're the best we are the best school in that local government. What we call local champion. If we came for debate in your school, just start crying. By that standard. Hallelujah. Until we made up our minds one day to visit a school that was used to competing with people going state by state. That day, they showed us that the ceiling of somebody else can be the foundation of the next building. hallelujah when i came back listen when i came back from that debate i was ashamed of myself i ran to the state library i had been the best student in my class until i tried writing jam mats 
after five hours i got four four one two three four i checked the back of jam brochure and they said there were certain people that got 300 and something i said joshua selma you are joking many of us have lived in circles that have lied to us too much we think the whole world is like our little community hallelujah that's how many men of God are. They, they have surrounded themselves by, with psychophants and liars who make them feel they have every anointing in the world. Then one day you go and try something that you don't have grace for and you receive a root shock. Then you begin to say it's not true. This thing didn't work for me. Anybody that is doing it is not of God. This is fake. Shut up. That you are lazy and you are not pressing does not mean everybody has refused to press. There are people who will not stop. Are you listening to me? The price for an extraordinary anointing. There can be more than what you have seen. There can be more. There can be more. Many of us stopped pursuing God the day somebody fell down under the anointing. You don't know whether it was you or it was the person's prayer. You just know it happened around you. From that day, you were convinced Whenever you go for meetings and they are ministering to people, you are waiting for them to say, ministers, come and lay hands. They say, ministers, you get up. What do you have? What do you have? How many? How many of it? He said, listen. He said, what do you have in your house? He said, I won't lie. I have something, but it's little. Sometimes you need to accept that you have. But what you have is not enough. The woman said, I have oil, but it's in a small cruise. The prophet said, all right. Let me show you something that can expand the oil for you. She never would have believed that there can be more. Hallelujah. I get very, very, I get very disturbed when I see people go for meetings. And to worsen the case, you want to see the disorganization of men of God wait until the anointing begins to break out in the meeting. Every man of God's body is itching him. Everybody wants to hold the mic. God has not finished, so just wait. There, there, are, there are some people there at the back, at the back. All these, all these things we are doing. For 10 minutes you are talking. You are just, it's like starting a generator. Go and sit down. There are certain people, Catherine Kuman, before she got to the venue of the meeting, kilometers away, people started falling under the anointing. This is how they knew Catherine Kuman was coming. One time she finished the meeting and they were pressing her and they had to follow her through a kitchen door the moment they opened the door all the chefs all of them were under the anointing until she passed she was not praying this was her default state hmm. hallelujah am i challenging you tonight Sometimes when people call me to come and minister, as soon as I finish the ministration, I don't even want to hear any comments because I have to run. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I've left Nigeria. I will not be fooled. The future of ENI is in that letter I, international. If you think what we have now is enough to feed the world, go and sit down. How many of you have seen people produce poster? And when you are seeing it on the laptop, you think that's the best poster you have produced. It's when you print it out and paste it, you see that it's as ordinary as the ones around. I refuse to be ordinary. There is a realm in God. Listen, can I tell you, when you hit that realm, you will start resting. You have entered the Sabbath of greatness. You will rest. Until you get to the seventh day, do not rest. I'm going to share with you four keys. Number one. This is not what I'm just preaching. These are keys that I've made up my mind that they'll be part of my life. Can I tell you something? Look at me. God is challenging some of you tonight. Some of you have not backslided, but you have, not, you have stopped growing. You've not backslided, but you are, there are many preachers in Nigeria that have stopped growing. They've not gone back, but they are in the same realm for a long time. 
It's just because where they have gotten to is, is substantially great. And it has been able to achieve one or two things. May your life produce a wonder that the world has not seen. May your life be the vehicle that God will reveal the more part of him that many people have not seen. Number one. You want to have an extraordinary anointing. The first price to pay is the price of consecration. The price of consecration. I will run very fast. Joshua 3 verse 5. The price of consecration. You don't hear this message is preached in church. Many people don't care. When I talk of consecration, I'm not just talking about run away from ladies. No, no, no. That's not even what I'm talking about. Consecration. To consecrate means to set apart. Consecration requires absolute surrender. Joshua 3 verse 5. Joshua 3. Verse 5. If you want the Lord to do mighty things through your life, can we read it? One to read. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. If you do that, what will happen? Tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. You want to see wonders in your life? The first key is the price of consecration. Consecration requires absolute surrender everybody say absolute surrender you will never have the extraordinary anointing when you have your own agenda you just want to use god's anointing to do your own agenda Uh, -uh. when god calls you his first assignment is to kill you you die to yourself to your ambitions listen you do not know the degree of surrender that brings authentic power and anointing how many of you remember that gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim? Some of you will remember him. He was right here in Koinonia. This guy wanted to be, he was in a group called Highlanders in Port Harcourt. Very serious occultic group. And he wanted the power of invincibility. He wanted to be able to do great things. When he met the Habalist, the Habalist told him, you have to consecrate yourself. For three days, and three nights, he was lying down in a graveyard. His eyes did not see any man. I'm telling you how the devil gives people power. Three days, he said in the night, he will see people come out of graves and move. And you were not supposed to shift. They will touch him. He said, many of you do not know that the anointing comes with a price. That's why you see, when you talk against a man who is truly anointed, whether you are right or wrong, God will punish you. Are you listening to me? Absolute surrender. Consecration requires enduring the pain of being different. Oh, it's painful to be different. Let me tell you. It's painful to ride a different, a different plane of life. When everybody is going this way. When this is their definition of success. Moses was in the backside for 40 years. When his age mates were ruling in Egypt, he left the luxury of Egypt to prepare for an extraordinary ministry. 40 years! At the end of it, he came back to Egypt. He said, I'm ready. Oh, you can know you are ready. And it will not be pride. You can know you are ready. There is a time called the season of appearance. Are you, are you listening to me? Years ago, I hope I'll be able to share a few stories today about myself. Years ago, when I started preparing, when the Lord showed me the visions of the extraordinary things I'll be doing, in my mind I said, Lord, will people believe these things? And then the Lord began, sometimes the Lord will hold me in a room. Three days I've not come out. My eyes has not seen the light. Three days. I would stay there just praying. Sometimes sleeping, I will wake up and I will lie down. And a mist, like a cloud, will literally come into the room. 
by the shape of a man. A real mist, I'm not talking of some metaphysics hallucination. If you are seeing it, you are seeing it. If it's like it is not there, you are either seeing it. This is Sam. This is music director. Hallelujah. I had very strange experiences. And I knew that this was a preparation for an extraordinary ministry. Many of you, this is what has been happening to you. Hallelujah. But nobody has told you. They've not encouraged you to know. Are you, are you listening to me? Many of you, you don't even know. And you are not serious because you started joining people. You now want to run and go and start a church or a fellowship. You've not even done anything. Ella, you'll be my secretary. Matilda, you'll be the PA. You are the one who will bath me. You are the one who will dress me. You will be going to the restaurant for me. Say, God gave me a commission. He said, now my son, arise and raise me a generation. Sit down. He said, arise from his perspective. See, let me tell you something about the word of God. God speaks from the realm of eternity. Everybody say eternity. He speaks from the realm of eternity. There is no time. So when the word comes to you, it comes with such a strong urgency, you think you should get up and go immediately. You must sit down and find the time component of every prophecy. That's why when prophets heard from God, they said, according to the time of life. Are, are you following me? Thank you, Jesus. It's painful to stand out. Listen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's painful to stand out. It's painful to be unusual. It's painful to be controversial. If you are not ready, forget about an extraordinary anointing. These are strange and rare people. That's why many people cannot make it to that list. They are too conscious of themselves. You must die to yourself to carry an extraordinary anointing. They will talk about you. They, we are speaking about Satan and Jesus at the same time. Two extremes. No matter, you will have to be in between two of them. Different in your life. Different in your mindset. There are ways they do things in your house. Now you make up your mind and say, no way. These sacrifices and this idolatry and the rest count me out. This is not going to be part of my life. I'm preparing for an extraordinary life. And people look at you. Say, so this thing has been there for how many years? Until the reward comes, you will look foolish. So let it not be strange to you. When you get to this realm, you will die to yourself. Literally. Everybody say the price of consecration. Many people do not like this. You know what? See? One of the biggest problems with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, especially the American church, and now it's coming into Nigeria, we love comfort too much. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit is called the comforter. But listen, I need you to know that any sensible man knows that you don't get comfort from day one. When they give birth to a child, the first thing he receives is a slap. That's a sign to show that he's alive. Are you hearing me? Many people want pampering. We have built churches that want pampering. You say something that is striking. People say, we don't like this kind of preaching. You know? We'll stop sowing into this ministry. And the man of God said, alright, we'll, we'll, we'll think of how to, to arrange it. May Koinonia never become the place that will water down truth because we are looking for money. Hallelujah. Everybody say the price of consecration. Before David was anointed, Psalm 89 said, I have found. Do you know what it means for God to find a man? The psalmist said, where can we hide from your presence? Yet God is saying, finally I have found you. Because many people just want comfort. We want to use the anointing of God to accomplish our own agenda. And so the first thing is you must die to yourself and die to your agenda. I was listening to Benny Hinn. He was talking to some youths. And he was telling them, he said, look, 
You people do not know the price that brought this level of anointing to my life. He said, I don't know the, name of, the names of footballers. I don't know the names of music artists. He said one time his son asked him to take him to a basketball place. He said when he got there and he saw people jumping, he could not understand what they were enjoying. The anointing will change you. It will make you strange. People say you didn't used to be like this. Where has your social life gone to? What happened? You will find it in the future. Give it up now. There are pastors who do visitation from Sunday to Sunday. Even Sunday morning, they quickly visit a rich man's house before they run to church. And then they believe that they are going to get an extraordinary ministry. And then many people now want methods. Young Cho went to preach somewhere. He pastors one of the largest churches in the world. Hallelujah. And many Americans just sat out with their notepad. They believe he was going to give them 31 guaranteed methods. You know, this is what we like now. Do this. Add A to B to C. This will happen. Young Gicho came up. He doesn't speak English too well. Paraphrasing. He said, you people don't pray. You are not serious. You just sit down. You want the anointing. And he went and sat down. That was the end of his message. It was a prophetic rebuke. Authentic prophetic Bible type prophetic rebuke. Hallelujah. That was the message. He who had an ear in that meeting should hear. And go back to the secret place. We like methods. Right now we read all kinds of psychological books. Unbelievers are writing books to govern church ministry. How to attract a crowd. 20 quick ways. Guaranteed. And many gullible men of God who are lazy just get up. You see them watching CDs. You would think it's something that will provoke them. A motivational speaker sits down. He says, when you come, start with a story. When you start with a story, use an example. When you do that, do this and that. You tried it, it didn't work because you are in Nigeria. Everybody say it. Nigeria. Nigerians have not been trained to tolerate nonsense. We are coming out from witchcraft straight. We are looking for something authentic. You don't come and tell people these jargons and junks. They will manage it for two days. They will laugh. We'll, we'll, when it gets bad, they will call you and say, Pastor, I sow the seed. I prayed. It's not working. If you don't respond to me by next week, you will see me in your church again. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Listen. Every great man knows that you must give up something to go up. Did you hear what I'm saying? You must give up something to go up. Politicians know this. By 1 a.m., you are sleeping. A politician is in a herbalist house just to get little political office. What has made the body of Christ so lazy? I believe in seed faith. But let me tell you the truth. If you want an extraordinary life, it's beyond money. Are you listening to me? It's even beyond impartation. A time will come you must dig your own well. Your customized dealing with the spirit. When you get it, you will know those who are having what is not it. If you are the best student in your class and you see the dullest student getting 99, you know something happened. Because you know what you are doing that makes you the best. Hallelujah. Many believers cannot detect error because they themselves have not entered the substance. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Revelations 18 verse 4. Revelations 18 verse 4. Powerful statement. It said, Come out of her, my people, that you will not partake of her sins, that her plague will not come upon you. The Lord is speaking to his bride. He said, come out of her, my people. Come out of that status quo. Hallelujah. And I heard a voice, another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye not receive her plagues. Everybody say, I'm coming out. Refuse it. Refuse it. 
you want to be a man of God, you better, some of you are attracted at the vanities. You, you spend day and night browsing church structures. You believe that is how to be in ministry. Hallelujah. Browsing church structures. And then you finish, you say, this is the car. And you gum it in your room and keep speaking it. The car that will carry me. Look, let me tell you something. Faith is not foolishness. Sit down and pay the price and tell the Lord, search my heart. There are tendencies. I don't know how it will be the day I see 500 members who are loyal to you and can open up their spirit. The price of consecration. You cannot want to live like any other person. I say it with all humility. You will not find me around just gallivanting around. You say, what are you doing? Say, today is a happy day. I just feel like strolling. I'm at the season of my life where I am still at the preparation stage for an extraordinary life. The moment I finish preaching in Koinonia, I run back and lectures continue. I'm in the school of the spirit. No amount of manifestation will stop it. When I go home, I just get on my knees and I say, Lord, I thank you for what you did. I thank you for the mighty things that happened. And the Lord says, let's continue. Well done, but let's continue. The journey is still far. Everybody say, I choose to sanctify myself. Say it, I choose to sanctify myself. There are many things that take our attention in the body of Christ. Computer games. Some of you is movies. You can watch movie from morning. You only stop to eat lunch. Immediately you finish. Which part? Which part? Did I watch that guy? Has, has a lady finally told him yes? Which part? You just come and sit down. The food will burn there. Later I say, off it for me, please. And they ask you, say, what do you want to become? You say, like Benny Hinn. Huh? Hallelujah. An extraordinary life. Listen, let me tell you. You must prepare for an extraordinary life. That's why oftentimes God will separate people away. He took Moses in the wilderness. He was alone. The price of consecration. Second Timothy 2. The last scripture. Let's run. Verse 19 to 21. The Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The next verse says, But in a great house, there are not only vessels, listen, not only vessels of gold and silver, but vessels of wood and clay, or some versions say earth. It says, Some are unto honor. That means it's your choice. There are vessels in a great house, but not every vessel is unto honor. He says, Some are unto honor, and some are unto what? Dishonor. Here's the condition. He says, If a man will purge, separate, consecrate, sanctify himself, he said, That man will be a vessel unto honor, meet, fit, prepared, equipped for the master's use. Say, I'm a vessel unto honor. The price of consecration. The price of consecration. There are many of you, every time you hear the word price, you don't like it. Let's drink ice cream. Hallelujah. Do you have money? No, 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 no. Don't mention it. We, we hate anything that has to do with price. The Bible says, Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. It says, I reckon, I come to terms with this fact. That the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. That's what the Bible says. I reckon that the sufferings, that means there are temporary setbacks. The sufferings of this present time. What time? The time of your preparation. It's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. Verse 19 says, for the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Number two, the price of revelation. 
and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You want an extraordinary anointing? This is the second price. The price of revelation. The price of revelation and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You will never be able to live an extraordinary life. You can never have an extraordinary ministry. If you do not know the person of the Holy Spirit and you do not have revelation. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 to 19. Paul began to pray and say for this cause. I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom. And revelation in the knowledge of him. 18 says. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That ye may know. Enlightenment. You want to be great in life. You must go for knowledge. You must go for knowledge. You must go for knowledge. Are you hearing me? You must go for knowledge. You can't be great in ignorance. No. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. It says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Satan is only as powerful as our ignorance will allow him. Success is very predictable when you understand the laws that govern it. Knowledge. Many of us don't go for revelation. You don't contend. You must become a student of the Bible if you want an extraordinary anointing. Are you listening to me? You must become a student, not just a recipient. Many of us want things from God, but we are not serious with the word of God. How amiable are your word, O oh Lord? They are my meditation all day long. I'm obsessed with the word of God. I think the word of God. My conversations are governed after the word. And I'm not just doing it to preach. If you are just preparing sermons, people will know. You can't pretend it forever. He said, thy word, oh God, have I hidden in my heart. This is how you prepare for an extraordinary life. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. You want an extraordinary life? Get back to the Bible. Go and sit down. Beyond morning devotion. My son, pay attention to my words. Proverbs 4. Incline your ears to my sayings. The Bible says. Do not let them depart from out of thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said they are life to those who find them. That means not everybody is interested. But they are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Hebrews 11 from verse 1. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He said, For by it the elders obtained a good report. The Bible says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. The price of revelation. People who are extraordinarily anointed are men of the word when you see a man who is anointed when i talk of the word i'm not talking of quoting the word you will know they submit to the governing authority of the word being a student of the word is not just about talking it there is a way you you submit like you submit to a man you have submitted to the authority of the word many of us read the word but we have not submitted to submit to the word of God means the word of God becomes the final opinion in your life. No matter what your argument is, when they bring the word of God, it ends every contention. John 5, 7. Jesus speaking. He says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you. Very important. His word must abide in you. Hallelujah. He says you will bear much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Hallelujah. John 16 verse 13. Let's look at I'm just giving you these scriptures. John 16 verse 13. Can you look at it very quickly? John 16. God is changing somebody tonight. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Listen, let me tell you something. 
Koinonia is called intimacy and partnership. The first thing is intimacy. You must contend for the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. It is in the knowledge of the Holy Spirit that you experience the gifts of the Spirit in your life. You cannot have the gifts of the Spirit and the anointing of the Holy Spirit independent of His presence. When He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into how many? That means there are many truths. He will guide you into all of them. It says, For He shall not speak of Himself, but who whosoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you he will show you hallelujah very important let me show you something jesus said john 14 verse 10 john 14 verse 10 the second prize the second key to an extraordinary anointing i just have four of them john 14 verse 10 Believest thou not that I am in the Father? Now, this was Jesus doing extraordinary works. And these people were dumbfounded. And they wanted the secret of his power. Listen to what he was saying. He says, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you. He said, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. The Holy Ghost. That source and sustainer that lives in me. He said, he doeth the works. Every time you see a mighty man doing things, he's not the one doing it. There is somebody behind. I was not born like this. I wasn't born this way. That's my sister. My blood sister. I wasn't born this way. It takes a commitment and a determination. Go for revelation. It's too early to start looking for manifestation. You are at the stage of preparation. No matter how great you are, if you can become no ma even if they make you a pastor of a church don't let titles make you graduate yourself from the school of the spirit go and sit down pastor femi is here he's the senior pastor in rema and you come and sit down quietly there are many people having his position now will start running you must learn to sit down don't allow the applause that men are giving don't let it see don't let it take you away from the school of the spirit hear me tonight there is more it's time to eat because the journey is far the angel told the prophet he said eat for the journey is far he ate a little and he slept the angel woke him again he said eat for the journey is far and the bible says he ate and he went in the strength of that bread a 40 days journey number three you want to see an extraordinary anointing in your life. The price of total obedience. Total obedience. Total obedience. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. For time's sake, we will not read it. Just read 5 to 10. Specifically verse 8. If you can project that verse 8. Shut up, Alakato Parana. Sense the anointing of the spirit in this place. Philippians 2 verse 8. The Bible says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became what? Obedient even unto death. Can I tell you something? There is a way you can be obedient that it will cost you. Are you listening to me? You must make up your mind whether you want to obey God or you want to obey men. It will cost you. It's called obedient unto death. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2. It says it shall come to pass. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. To do and observe all that I command you this day. That these blessings, uh, you know, I, I, will, I will exalt you. shall be above all nations. And this blessing shall come to you and overtake you. Then it begins to list downwards. Hallelujah. Very important. Matthew 7, the Bible says, He that heareth my words and doeth them. Not he that heareth my word and just dances. No. Obedience, 24 to 25. Matthew 7, 24 to 25. It's like it to a wise man that built his house upon the rock. I want to challenge you. Many of you, the reason why God is not working with you is because you don't have a heart to obey God. There are some of you here, the day God asks you to empty your account, you will bind and cast and lose and curse. And even write it as a prayer request. That voice, 
that likes taking what God has given me. Obedience. Obedience. Everybody say obedience. Obedience will cost you. Obedience will cost you. They can give you a ministration somewhere. There are great ministrations that I have been given and the Lord says no. No. I just tell the protocol, no, I'm not going. I don't need to tell lies and say, okay, something, uh -uh. I, I'm not going to go. I remember one time, there was a pastor who invited me and I was praying. At the same time, there was an NCCF meeting in Delta. And for three days, I kept seeing myself there. And I had to call him because I had given him my word. They were so excited, they were preparing. I said, pastor, I'm sorry to tell you, but the Lord wants me to be... The Lord wants me to be in Delta. The pastor was so sad. In his mind, you say so because my church is now not as big as a state conference. That's why you are not coming. No, not at all. I paid my transportation. I went there. And at the end of it, when I got there, the Lord told me you are not collecting an honorarium. When they bring it, bless it and give them back. So it was not just, it was not for money at all. Obedience. Hallelujah. I've shared it. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not necessary. It's not something I'll say now. But somebody brought a huge gift for me one time this year. And when he brought it, I just looked at him. And I told him, I said, mm -mm. as he was, he was trying to offer me, I said, no way. Already God had told me no. How many of you can say no when God says no? How many of you can say yes when God says yes? You are afraid of being different. You are afraid of being criticized. You are not ready for an extraordinary anointing. Because one day, God will tell you to declare his counsel. And the fear of what men will say. Let me tell you something. Extraordinarily anointed people are stubborn people. They are men that can defy things. I don't mean rebellious. Mary said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Someone met me one day and said, don't you think meeting once a week is too small for koinonia? I looked at the person I said, back to sender. We don't do things just because we want to do it. No. As you see upon the mount, then you will do. If you do what God did not direct, you will defend it by yourself. Hallelujah. Obedience to the principles of the word. Obedience to the voice of the spirit. Many of us, when we started with God, one of the things that made our spiritual journey well was because we were living by the principles of God. Many of us are waiting for a word from God or a vision or a supernatural experience, but you are not obeying the truth of God's word that you are seeing. You want extraordinary finances. You are not tithing. You're not giving. You see somebody coming every week to give tight. So, are, are you sure this guy is not pretending it? Are you the only one God is blessing? <laughs> the performance is for obedient people. The performance is not just for hearers. Make up your mind to obey the word. No matter what it will cost you. Hallelujah. Shibatakatabala. The last scripture there, Jeremiah 7.23. Jeremiah 7.23. God is separating people in this place to give them extraordinary anointings. He said, but this thing commanded I them saying, obey my voice and I will be your God and ye shall be my people. He said, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you that it may be well with you. You want it to be well with you, it will be on the wings of obedience. Hallelujah. Years ago, after we came back from our crusade, it was a powerful time. PFN called us and they said, we want you to come and establish a branch of your ministry. They were ready to give us an auditorium and give us pastors to train. 
I was excited. I went to the Lord. The Lord just answered me and said, you will die. That was exactly what I repeated to the people. I said, the Lord said, I will die. Yeah. Obedience. It's difficult to obey when you are going to lose a lot. It's easy to obey when the obedience is on to gaining something immediate. Obedience. I choose to obey the word. I choose to live by its truth. Number four. There are many of you who have done these three. But the fourth key is what you have missed. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. Look at me. Everybody. How many of you have seen someone cutting a tree? Do you know that if you keep hitting that tree, it looks like nothing is happening. There is one final hit that will cut the tree. That was not the strongest hit. It was the most consistent one. Are you listening to me? Many of us, listen, and let me tell you something. One of the greatest lessons, or yes, one of the greatest lessons that the Lord has taught me in this life, is that it pays to wait upon the Lord. Impatience has cheated many people out of the blessings of God in this life. We are in a hurry for everything. Everybody say the price of consistency. Consistently doing the same thing, regardless of the outcome. Regardless of the outcome. You tight and you don't see the blessing, you say, I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. I know that God is behind his word. Great people in life are those who have done certain things consistently. Galatians 6 verse 9. Do not be weary in well doing. He said for we will reap in due season if we faint not. Do not be weary in well doing. He said and let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap. Everybody say I will reap. Yeah. Some of you have been coming for koinonia. Again and again. Six months. Things have not changed. Do not be weary. If it is what you are doing well. Don't be weary. The Bible says you will reap. Because you are sowing. The only way the devil can kill your harvest. Is to stop you from sowing. The Bible says, He that sows unto the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. In 1 Kings 18, from verse 30 to 46, we will not read it, just write it down. 1 Kings 18, verse 30 to 46. The Bible says, Elijah prayed seven times. Everybody say seven times. If Elijah stopped at the sixth time, it would not work. He had to pray how many times? In fact, the Bible is so graphic. It says he prayed the first time. He sent the servant, go and check. The man said, nothing. Oh. Consistency is what separates ordinary people and extraordinary people. Consistency. Consistency. You pray no matter the outcome. You study the word no matter the outcome consistency many of us when we are at the edge you are at the verge of a breakthrough that's when many of us give up hallelujah in second kings chapter 5 you read from verse 1 to 4 but let's just focus on verse 4 second kings 5 the bible says the prophet had told naaman he said if you want to be clean go and dip yourself how many times seven times naaman was complaining and grumbling it didn't change him the bible says ah i thought they were protecting it hallelujah naaman dipped himself how many times don't worry just do your work media seven times do you know what it means to dip yourself many of you were baptized they dip you only once imagine a great man he entered the water he entered and came out he asked the slave girl, how many? She said, one. Do it again. He entered, came out. 
at the fourth time he was already embarrassed he was looking like mud god said seven times mr man consistency consistency there are many of you you are looking for a prophet to prophesy to you nobody comes god says just continue doing what you are doing that's the only prophetic word you need keep doing it pastor chris will say what how, how does he say keep speaking it don't stop saying it be consistent some of you start preparing for an extraordinary life and impatience will just cancel it out how and you know see it's dangerous because when you start a journey you get to a point where you are in the middle you it's too far for you to go back and then you can't reach there many of us start the journey and you go back you are traveling to abuja you've now gotten to abuja kaduna expressway and you say kai this journey is too far i went to meduguri on, on road i slept and woke up i don't know how many times i asked the driver how many more hours he said six or seven i said what we've been on this journey since i had to sleep on the road but did that mean we were missing the way see that you have to wait does not mean you made a wrong decision continue john 6 verse 15 i mean joshua 6 verse 15 the crossing of jericho joshua 6 verse 15 the bible says on that seventh day you can imagine to throw a big wall god gave them an instruction they went round once the people in jericho were wondering who are these madmen they had to die to themselves to know that whatever god tells you to do it will work on the seventh day they now started going one two three four five madness six at the seventh time they blasted the trumpet and the bible tells us see the wall of jericho did not fall down it sank because the bible says on the wall five chariots could stand on it so even if it falls it will become another wall again sank john 20 verse 11 when i was preparing these notes i just put all these scriptures and the holy spirit told me no there's one more my people must hear john 20 verse 11 the bible says when jesus resurrected all the disciples came and the one jesus loved checked the tomb and they saw that jesus was not there they checked once and they ran away but the bible says mary magdalene stayed there everybody say consistency and when she checked again suddenly she saw an angel consistency consistency requires patience it requires uncommon patience it requires grace hallelujah many people in ministry they start and then god is telling them just be consistent don't compromise don't compromise teach your message it may not be popular but don't compromise if there, if, do you know that is impatience and lack of consistency that makes people to derail from the things of god and get into witchcraft they are looking for fast fast fame fast everything they want a jeep fast fast jeep one of the greatest revelations that god has put in me is the beauty of patience i can wait i've killed hurry from my life i can wait some of you are in a hurry for everything. And this is your own becoming. You are in a hurry to, you want digital hearing God now. Let you just say, thank you, Jesus. And God just begins to talk. Five minutes later, he has finished. You say, I give you praise. Unfortunately, his system is not like that. They that wait. Hallelujah. Very important consistency these four things are the things that i practice in my own life every time and i'm determined not to stop it this last one is probably new to many people you are just seeing the power of consistency 
Consistency. When you want to build a house, the workers come every day. They put three blocks today. Tomorrow they come again. They add four blocks. I was checking the database of Koinonia and I found out we're getting close to 5,000. The database, people who have been blessed, who have come to worship. I remember when we started it, 20 people, new people, 40 people, 20 people today, 100 people, 60 people, 400 people. Consistency. Everybody say consistency. I play a bit of keyboard. When I started, I was fairly consistent. And then I stopped being consistent. Do I like keyboard? Yes. Am I blessed by it? Yes. Can I play like I can? No. Why? You are not consistent. You see why many people are not consistent in God's presence. That's why they don't know when God speaks a thing. Consistency. Consistency. That's why we have a lot of people who are not stable with spiritual things. You run to this man of God today. Abuja or Lagos or wherever. You say, man of God, my life must change. He said, come and sit down under the word. Two weeks later, I say, man of God, it has not changed though. He said, just continue. He said, oh, let me find one that can give this thing to me sharp, sharp. Many of us have entered into all kinds of things. All kinds of things. Everybody say, I will, I will continue in the things that I've started. Consistency. Let's do a quick review. Number one, the price of consecration. The price of consecration. Number two, the price of revelation. Consecration will kill you. You will take up the agenda of God and forget about your own agenda. There are some of you who finish service. You want to run and go for work. God will say, uh -uh. for you, you are exempted. The normal law is to look for a job. You, you are exempted. You are a lady, you finished. You are just planning. Thank God I will get married. God will say, uh-uh. You are going to marry in the next three years. Give me these three years of your life. Say, back to sender. I've always known. Enemy of progress. Now that is my breakthrough. It's my turn to shine. Consecration. You must die to yourself. You can't do everything. There are many of us, every program, secular or Christian, you are there. Something happens in TJ Palace, you come. You are happy. You just sit down there. Later, I say, Kai, it's time for fellowship. Let me run. And you, you wonder why your ears is as if they put cotton wool inside. You can't hear God. You always hear nonsense. Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark. If you lie down close to the ark, you will hear the voice of God. An extraordinary life. I'm saying this today because it will happen by the Spirit. He and I will be an extraordinary ministry. I won't be. I have come to the end of my sin. Take over, Jehovah. I have touched the end of my life. Listen, don't be in a hurry in your life. Stop following the plan that people have carved for themselves to define success. You will fall into a ditch you may not recover from. Receive the blueprint. When you see your life becoming strange, it's a sign that there is an uncommon call upon your life. Endure it. It's working for others, but when God gets to you, you will train others and raise them, but you, God will say, sit down. There is a reason. You are coming to the end of yourself. I remember one man who God instructed and said until he buys 15 cars for people before he buys one for himself. At the end of the third car, the wife told him, See, I'm going to leave you. I've been keeping quiet about this thing. It's paining me. Because people started embarrassing the woman. They say something is wrong with your husband and you are a foolish woman. You won't go and do something about it. Fifteen 
That was the instruction God gave him. This guy will walk like an elephant and carry money and buy car. Ejimi's mother of blessed memory. Before she went to be with the Lord, she was preparing to buy a nice car for herself. And then the Lord gave her an instruction that she should buy a brand new Toyota Corolla and go and give one of her junior staff. How many people will slap you when you do that kind of thing? Ladies, if your husband comes and says, Honey, come and give me a hug first and a kiss and you feel, he says, what, what is it? I can't wait. He said, God has spoken. Say, all right, sit down. Now, we are going to evacuate this house. Say, the spirit of God. The house that you built with your own money. They will call you from the village. Quit. They will say, come back home. Before you come home, they are prepared what will recover you from that mindset. They'll say, just drink this before we start talking. Because you are not well. Mad men are the ones who have changed this world. Uncommon people. Uncommon people. Uncommon people. Some of you have to trek long distances to come for Koinonia every week. But you are determined. Consistency. Go for revelation. Stop doing cheap ministry. You will start insulting great people. Don't join that group. Stay with the spirit until you catch a substance of life. When you have a message, I promise you the world will hear you. Forget about money. Chase God, you will find other things. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. And his righteousness and all other things. A time will come if somebody pays you one million per week, he has insulted you. You hold on. If you can endure. He that endures to the end. Not stop at the middle. If you start a race. A marathon. And you're running. Assuming you're supposed to go around Zaria. You started from ABU. You're you are almost coming. And you are you at um, energy research. And you collapse there. Will they say hey yeah we understand. We saw your effort. We have been watching you. When they list the names of those who are disqualified, they will put your name there. So the person who just started from here to aviation and stopped, and you, you have now been put in the same class. Everybody say, I'll be consistent. Say, I'll be consistent. Pray in tongues. It's too early to pray and start saying, oh, I'm looking. It's something. Mm -mm. Koinonia is where we are today because we have been consistent. For four years, God trained us. We're coming every night. People were sitting on the floor. Pastor Williams and his wife with the kids sometimes will come all the way from Sabo. Married people, they will come and sleep in the student's hostel. They are looking for something. Tomorrow now, somebody will see him and the wife will say, how are we sure? This woman said, she's just chopping, ripping where she didn't sow. Somebody spoke against um, Catherine Ma Maria would what eat her. She said, The Lord judge you. The person's tongue became like banana until he wrote an official letter of apology and she slapped it back. Hallelujah. I was told, Was it Oedeko or, or Adeboe that somebody saw the things that they were doing and the woman just hissed and trivialized it? Oedeko. That woman was barren for I don't know how many years from the story. One time she went to a prophet searching for solution. The man wanted to pray for her and he said, Stop. God is revealing to me that you have offended a great man of God. This is what is responsible. She called the name. The woman packaged a seed. Don't worry. Those who are talking against you will sow into your life for recovery from their madness tomorrow. Just continue. Continue. Anytime you see a great man, I was, I was speaking to my sister, you know, she was over at my place and I was talking to them and I was telling them something. I said, one of the greatest things I've learned in life, listen to me. See, if you try to defend yourself, hear me, you are, God, God doesn't have anything to do again. Are you listening to me? There are many of us, they just, you just pray for five hours. You want to explain to everybody. Ah, ah. Be convinced about this. 
at every point of your life, those who love you are greater than those who don't. Don't lose touch with those who truly love you and be focusing on a few people. Out of the twelve, it was only Judas who didn't love Jesus, not eleven. Jesus focused on the people who loved him. Some of us want who loves me. Do you like me? Do you don't like me? Do you don't like me? You say, why now? Let me, let me make you like me. Ah. Extraordinary people are lonely people. Lonely people. Until they arrive. And then everybody will see Moses was alone. They didn't come for visit for him. They didn't send any bounty from Egypt. They thought he was dead. But when God was done with him, it became a sign and a wonder. Are you ready to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. We are going to cry to the Lord. The Lord is calling you into an extraordinary anointing. Into an extraordinary anointing. We are going to pray for just five minutes. And we will round up. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Everyone hold your hands together and let's pray in tongues for just one minute. Jeka prasata kata balada bakata prakata balada bos. Rakata bakata prakata kata bakata prakata balada ba. Jem prataka poka sapata kata balada bakati gada ba. There's a realm. A realm of the extraordinary. The realm of champions. That's where world changers dwell. It's a mountain where the eagles dwell. Not where the birds are. Not where the chickens are. It's a pedestal. It's a plane in the spirit. It's the place for mighty men. It's the place for great men. Writers of history. History makers. World shakers. Ambassadors indeed. Men whom the earth is not worthy of. Come on, pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, I refuse an, extra, an ordinary life from today. I make a vow and a commitment. I will not be ordinary. Go ahead. Not in business. Not in leadership. Not in my job. Not in ministry. I contend for an extraordinary anointing. I refuse to be average. Not in ministry. An extraordinary healing ministry. An extraordinary deliverance ministry. An extraordinary preaching ministry. An extraordinary apostolic ministry. Pray. An extraordinary prophetic ministry. Extraordinary evangelical ministry. Pray. I will be an extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary businessman. Tell yourself. I am destined to be great. My parents may not know it. Pray. The people in my community may not know it. But I'm determined. I refuse. I refuse the ordinary. I refuse the ordinary. My name will be written in the sands of time that I did terrible things in righteousness. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray all of these four things. Grace to pay the price for consecration. Grace to pay the price for revelation and intimacy. Grace to pay the price for obedience. Grace to be consistent. You know where you have been, you have been faulting. Lift your voice and pray. Grace, oh God. Grace. 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 
Sekete koto palatapa. Repos koparyadaba. Grace to separate myself from the cares of this world. Grace not to entangle myself with the lusts and appetites that hinder the anointing. Grace, lift your voice and cry. Shake a prosco prekete kala. And protosco maria. Grace to live a sanctified life. Grace to live a life that is set apart. Grace, grace. Pay the price. Pay the price. Lamentations 327. It is good that a young man bear his youth, his, his, his yoke in his youth. Pray for grace. Lift your voice and pray. Grace for revelation. Grace for revelation. Say, Lord, grace to be a student of the word. I will buy books. I will buy tapes. Day and night. Day and night. I will sit with the word. Day and night. I will sit with the word. Pray for intimacy with the Holy Ghost. Tell yourself, Holy Spirit, I'm tired of pretending like I know you. I want to enter a tangible experience. I want to hear your voice. I want to walk with you. Koinonia. I long for that intimacy. Pray for grace to obey. Lift your voice and pray for grace. Grace to obey. Lord, I've been disobedient. Lift your voice and pray. Grace to obey. No matter what it will cost you, you will be different. They will mock you. They will criticize you. Every great man followed that path. You are not the first. You will not be the last. Enjoy it. Pass through it. Enjoy it. Pass through it. When you become great, your life will explain the process. Pass through it. Make up your mind to obey God. Be uncompromising. No matter what it will cost you. Finally, pray for consistency. Consistency. Some of you stop doing the things that brought you to this realm. That's why you've not gone higher. Lift your voice and pray. Consistency. I will stop fasting. I will stop fasting. I will stop praying. No. No. Nothing will make me stop fasting. Nothing will make me stop praying. I will stay with the word. I will read books. I will watch videos. I will spend time in worship. I will build myself. I will develop myself. I will learn from great people who have gone ahead of me. I will give my eyes no sleep until I do the things that will move me forward. No matter the commendations, I will let it get into me. I make up my mind to be consistent. To be consistent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the secret. This is the secret. There is nothing mysterious about it. An extraordinary anointing. Hallelujah. An extraordinary anointing. This is the secret to an extraordinary anointing. Lift your hands in one minute. I want to pray with you. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray that grace will come upon you and make you walk in these realms. For many of you, this grace will come upon you in a mighty way. In a mighty way. I want you to carry an anointing that will destroy spiritual laziness. As I count seven, that grace will come. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take it now. 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 I release it. Receive it. That fire. Go 
Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Let it come upon you. Grace. Extraordinary ministry. Extraordinary anointing. Take it like fire. Holy Ghost. Move in power. Move in power. Outside. Outside. Let the power of God move. Grace. Let the fire burn. Let it ignite you. Take it, 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 take it. Take it. Take it. Be separated. Let the desire for the ordinary die. Let the desire for the ordinary receive it. It will come upon you like rain, like rain, like rain. Take a take a photo, Pakata. For an extraordinary anointing, for an extraordinary life. Set up, set up, May you command results. May you command results. Results that can be reproduced again. May you see the power of God in your ministry. May you see the power of God in your life. I bless you with a hunger for spiritual things. Hunger that will separate you from fainting. Lord, I need you from my heart. I need you. Truly, I need you. This is my cry tonight. I need you. Lord, I need you. an opportunity for us to express how much we need you Lord tonight the brief moments that we have together give us a deeper passion for you cause us to love you more than life itself hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord God bless you. Please be seated. He is able more than able to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able more than able To handle everything that comes my way. If you believe this song, join me and sing. He's able more than able to do much more than I could ever dream. Lord, you are able. You are more than able You're able to make me what you want to do Hallelujah Tonight
tonight I want us to pray. Just encourage them. We'll pray. Some people, can you help me? Hallelujah. Haggai. Book of Haggai. This is the end. This is the end. For me, this is not a special. Your holy presence that is living in me. This is my daily bread. You are my daily bread. You are my. Every time 
you come before the presence of God, something is happening to you. Hallelujah. It is possible to be in the presence of God and not know and not be changed. But when you come before His presence and your heart is opened, you will be changed. Haggai 2 verse 9. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, saith the Lord. Jump to verse 20. Jump to verse 20. And again the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Look up. How many of you know that there are shakings happening around the world right now? He said, I will shake the heavens. I will shake the earth. In a way and a manner that no man can pretend not to know what is happening. Next verse. Verse 22. And I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. So oh, this is coming to pass. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. And I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the hidden. Is this in your Bible? This is God saying this is what I'm doing in this season. He said, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them. And the horses and their riders shall come down. Everyone by the sword of his brother. 23. I want you to read this together. I want to read. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, I will take thee, put your name there, my servant, Put your father's name there. Say the Lord. And will make thee a signet. He said, and when all these shakings are happening, this is what I will be doing with you. He said, he called him by name and called the name of his father so that you will not be mistaken. He said, I, you know what a signet is? A signet is the king's symbol of authority. When a king makes laws, he uses his signet ring and stamps it. He said, when all these are happening, this is the prophecy for you. Because you are my servant. He said, I will make you a symbol of royalty. Because I have chosen you. If you believe that, say amen. amen. He began to speak to Zerubbabel about the glory of the latter house first and foremost he told him he said do you remember those of you who are old enough do you remember this house talking about the nation of israel the temple he said compared to what you see today it's nothing to write home about he said but don't be discouraged for i am still moving there is something about to do where is the power, the ability, the light, the authority? We talk so much about the days of God's generals. We talk so much about mighty men. We talk so much about mighty works. Terrible things in righteousness. The Bible talks about certain kinds of people that were almost not like human beings. In the book of Hebrews 11. It says, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Where are these kinds of people? What dimension of glory did they walk in that, bring, that brought them into this depth of kingdom reality? But right now what we see happening in the church and in our television is, is not a, it's nothing to be compared with the things that have been done in the earth. But the Lord is saying do not be discouraged. In case many of you have been weary and are saying, Lord... You have told us that you will do mighty things in our days. And he left Zerubbabel with a prophecy in verse 9. He said, for the glory of this house you are seeing, is about to surpass the glory that you have even seen before. He said, and I will fill this house with my glory. 
Hallelujah. And I hope you realize that in the New Testament, the temple is not just a building like this. The Bible says, Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so God is saying in this season, He wants to fill your life with His glory. He wants you to be so full of His glory. So full of His power. So full of His grace. That He will use you as a symbol. His signet ring upon the earth. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that this is what God is doing in this season? God is searching for men. Every time there is catastrophe and disaster. In our first service in January, I told us that I saw a lot of commotion happening in the earth. Death, murder, all kinds of things. But in the midst of it, the Lord told us this is a season of supernatural exploits. It is the character of the spirit to see the end from the beginning. And he speaks as though he's already in the end. Because you see, God does not have a process in his life. The beginning and the end are all present before him. So he speaks from his realm of reality. Hallelujah. And he said in this season, Zerubbabel prophesied that I will shake the heavens and the earth. And that the glory of the latter house will far exceed the glory of the former. The glory of all the people in your family, the thing you are about to do. He said, I will walk a walk in your days that even if they told any man, he will not believe. I will walk a walk. You have seen what your father have done. You have seen what your mother, you've seen what the people around. But God is saying, I will walk a walk in your life. That if I told you, you will not even believe. Oh, this I believe. I'm a believer. I believe God. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance. The performance is only for them that believe. Hallelujah. I will fill you with glory. This is the year and the season that God wants to bring us into his glory. That you will be so full of the glory, the presence of God. Hallelujah. But how will this happen? John 12. God is going to stir up and activate something in your spirit tonight. Hallelujah. I'm just giving us a charge and we'll pray. We want, I want us to do some prayer in this place tonight. As we prepare ourselves for the miracle service. Verse 23. Now, every time Jesus is talking, listen. Because the Bible says, every word that proceeds from his mouth is sufficient to keep you alive. Hallelujah. Anytime you are studying scripture and Jesus is talking, pay attention. This is what Jesus is saying. And Jesus answered them and said, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be what? Glorified. Next verse. So he said, this is the hour that the son of man will be glorified but how shall it happen he said verily verily in other words i stake my reputation at this except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies the bible says it abided alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit i want to share with you tonight very briefly the mystery of death and glory I want to show you that in the journey of the believer, there is a relationship between death and glory. This is a message that has not been understood by the body of Christ. We want power. We want anointing. What makes certain people so anointed, so full of power, so full of authority, so full of grace, so full of the favor of the Lord? Hallelujah. Jesus began to speak and said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. The very next verse, he tells us how he's about to be glorified. He said, except a corn of wheat falls. That means there is a relationship between death and glory. Listen to me, saints of God. 
if you want to become a great man a man a mighty man in the spirit this message is for you tonight this is a prayer meeting hallelujah and jesus begins to relate death and glory haggai prophesies that is the intention of god in this season to bring us into greater glory and jesus is saying in fact it's not just the season the hour has come and he's teaching us the principle that until the activity of death finds expression in you you cannot manifest and walk in the glory of God. i will reverence you lord I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I'm teaching you the art of the secret place. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting i will reference you lord i will reference you lord I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence When God is set to bring his glory in your life, the first thing that happens to you is you begin to die. Now, this, listen, when you begin to die in the spirit, that's the time to rejoice. Hallelujah. Because when a corn of wheat dies, out of that decay will spring forth a new seed and it will begin to bear fruit. Paul says, so then death works in us that life will work in you. The degree to which you are dead is the degree to which you can minister. Only dead men can carry the glory of God. When the glory of God comes, the first thing it does is kill you and then it makes you alive again. That's why Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. He said, nevertheless, I suddenly found myself alive again. But this time around, I do not live by my flesh. I live by another life, another law, another set of values. Hallelujah. When God is said to bring his glory to your life, listen, the first thing that will happen is that you will die to your old mindset. Hold on. The Bible says the glory of the latter house. In other words, the latter house is not the same as the former house, correct? When God, the Bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Many of us want to just tidy up the old wine skin. God wants to tear it completely and replace another one. He said you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Old mindsets, old ideologies, old principles. The word of God gives you a new mindset. Not the mindset of your village. Not the mindset of your culture. See, when, when the word of God begins to walk in you, you begin to die to your old ideologies. Suddenly you find out that the things that attract and interest you are changing. This is the sign that you are prepared for the glory. Your appetite, the things that compel your desire, begin to change death is working in you hallelujah 
your mindset begins to change. Your plane of perception of both spiritual and natural things begin to change. You see things from another perspective. Death is working in you. Then you begin to die to the flesh. You find out that your flesh has no hold on you again. Listen to me. A lot of believers do not have the grace and the control over their flesh. Paul said in Romans 7, he said, but with my spirit I serve the Lord. And then in my members, my body, I see another law working in me. So that the things I would want to do, I do not find myself doing them. And the things I do not want to do, that's what I find myself doing. He said, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Although a great apostle, he was communicating his frustrations. Hallelujah. The flesh. When you begin to die to your flesh, the things of the spirit no longer become a burden. Are you listening to me? Things like prayer. Things like fasting. Things like your commitment in the house of God. It no longer becomes a thing of force. You now have a revelation. The grip of your flesh is no longer there. Hallelujah. The word of God does not become a burden for you again. You will begin to flow naturally with the Holy Spirit. Then you will die to the world, cosmos, the system. You will die to the mindset of this system. The Bible says, love not the world. He says, he that loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The word there is eros. The word is lost. Hallelujah. A craving, an uncontrollable, unquenchable, godless appetite for the world. The more you begin to die to the world, you will find out that the things of the Spirit become your passion. This is not about pastor. Are you listening to me? This has nothing to do with ministry. Because there are some of you looking at me right now. You are so indifferent about the things of God. Let me announce to you that you are still alive in your flesh. Forget about the issue of glory. Glory is not a thing of prophecy. Are you listening to me? I can't prophesy glory into your life. Glory is a realm you attain unto. It's not receive glory. No. There's nobody that has prophesied glory to anybody from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of glory. He's the one who brings you into that realm of glory. Where you become supernatural. You become unusual. You become powerful. Full of light. Full of grace. And you can chart the course of your destiny based on the integrity of the word of God. This is what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. But the hardest thing for believers, listen to me, is to die. Many believers don't like that subject of death because death connotes inconvenience. You will die to your ego. You will die to your plans. You will die to your ambitions. You will die to everything. Your whole world, what you have, what you have built, the tower of Babel that you have built, when God comes into your life, He will not just put a crown on it. He will shatter that tower of Babel and begin to rebuild a new city after His own pattern. This is what is not taught in church. We teach people that you come as you are. Just have whatever you have. Just add whatever God brings to you. That's not true. God empties you completely. You cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Many of us are still carrying our old wine skin. Your old mindset. Your old value systems. You don't want to leave them. You are holding on to them. You are afraid of the unknown. You are afraid of launching into God. You are afraid of your friends. You are afraid of loneliness. You are afraid of your associations. You are afraid of the embarrassment and the stigma and the temporary um, inconveniences that come. 
as we contend to walk in the spirit romans 8 verse 18 says for i reckon that the sufferings the constraints the setbacks of this present time is not worthy hallelujah when you see a woman pregnant look up everybody when you see a woman pregnant there is another life there is a baby in her womb are you listening to me it will destabilize her posture temporarily is that correct it's not whether she likes it or not she will find herself bending by force so long as she wants to keep that baby she will do unusual things you may not like it her appetite will change because of the child she's carrying are you listening to me she wake up by two o'clock and say she wants to drink um, uh, milk and then you bring it she said no it was jollof rice she said now this is this is a product of something that is happening are you listening to me her ideologies change she begins to visit the hospital consistently when you see these things it begins to point an arrow to you that very soon this woman is going to deliver a child hallelujah so when the holy ghost is birthing glory in you there will be a season of travail the bible says as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a son listen to me church of the lord jesus christ i will not deceive you the birth of anything valuable is painful are you listening to me the birth of anything valuable is painful anything at all the bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with civilian affairs when you realize that you are part of the army of god the glory house that Zerubbabel saw and prophesied you realize that it's a season of glory now is the time to constrain yourself as you abide by the principles of God it will cost you it will cost you your reputation it will cost you your friends hear me you cannot want this side and want that side uh -uh. the bible says no man can serve two masters at a time you cannot serve your friends and serve god you cannot serve your ego and serve god you cannot feed your desires and feed god ladies listen to me very carefully because you are the ones that are most vulnerable at this time you love god until you find the things that your desires crave for i need you i need you nothing no place no one else will do i need you i need you for you satisfy the longing inside some of you should not be singing this song because you are lying you are just singing it because you are enjoying it but you are telling lies you are telling lies while you are saying lord i need you god is saying it's a lie the angels are saying it's a lie see listen you must get to a point in your life where you make up your mind and vow it's an oath of allegiance it's an oath of fraternity with god you say lord i'm on your side once and for all there is no doubt again i'm on your side if it means me not getting married to be on your side so be it if it means me not being rich in this life so be it if it means me not having any reputation not having any church not having any ministry so be it you cannot love your desires and love the glory of god no way sir but can i tell you something if you pay the price for that glory the bible says the glory of the latter house what god will do in your life when he's done with you will far exceed what you would have desired for yourself hallelujah jeremiah 29 11 it says for i know the thoughts that i you know listen christians have this ugly way of thinking that god is the one who will wreck their lives look at me if you have that mindset repent this night 
As we start praying, before joining our, our prayer point, just find somewhere and lie down and say, Lord, I thought you would destroy me. Hallelujah. A lot of people believe that when you come to God, He will just make you a failure. He will make you a useless person. It's preachers that taught that, not the word of God. Hallelujah. For my Bible tells me, I know the thoughts I think towards you, say the Lord. That means God is thinking about you. God is thinking. You don't need to wonder what is in his mind. The word of God is a mirror that tells you what is in the mind of God. The living logos. The thoughts of God. I know what God is thinking about me. That one day Joshua Selman will be a blessing to the world. That one day beyond the shores of Zaria, beyond the shores of this nation, we will do great and mighty things for the king. This is what God is thinking about me. I know what God is thinking about me. God is saying, son, I can do more with you than I've done so far. So don't you allow any pride and any apostle and all this nonsense that people use and deceive themselves. Don't let it get to you. The journey is still far. I know what God is thinking about me. That son, if you can pay the price now, the days of glory will come. You know, you people sometimes see the ministers or see some of the leaders or see our lives and you just believe. That teaching that you just lie down and God can call whom he can call. Jacob have I loved, um, Esau have I hated. Paul said, and let me correct that, I am what I am by the grace of God. Alright? He said, but this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than ye all. He said, nevertheless, it is the grace of God. Many of you like teachings on favor. I teach about it. But your concept of favor is a window to run away from the process. There is a name for you, a thief. That's what the Bible says. It says thieves and robbers are the ones who want to follow the back door. There's no following the back door with spiritual things. I tell you the truth. There are many people who are running, doing ministry now. They will carry over many dealings with the spirit. Have you ever seen a matured man with short nicker going back to primary school and sitting? Because many people are jumping the dealings of God. We want ministry. We want branches. We want to go on air. Some of you are already like that. You are carrying that mindset. You are on your way going. God has held your legs together. Tied your hands like the hands of Samson and dragged you here. He said, correct that nonsense before you become a casualty to yourself. If you fail a course as a student, you will carry it over. You just have a few months. If you fail a course as a general in the spirit, no matter how old you are, you will wear that short nicker again and sit down in that play class. That's why many people, I don't say this to condemn people, many people after they have risen, even if it is 20 years in ministry, if they must continue with God, somehow they will still go back and take those extra courses with the Spirit again. So what is your hurry for? The Holy Spirit is running with you at 80 km per hour. You see one zealous person just pass at 160. You say, Lord, this is twice my size. You hold on. Very soon you see people packing his bones and his legs. He has had a casualty with something else. This is how people, people run. That you are called does not mean you are already sent. Listen, listen, listen. My brother, come. I called him. Have I sent him? Start going. Did I send him? But he was genuinely called. That's what a lot of believers are doing. God says, on your mark, you tell yourself, go, and you start moving. Then you get to the point where you need God's mercy, and you say, where is the one that sent me? God says, uh, where is the one that called you? I'm here. The one that sent you should respond. Hallelujah. So you see a preacher come and stand before people. And say, you members are not even taking care of me. Huh? Is this what the Bible says? Please don't yoke the people. Go and meet the person that sent you. God didn't send you as a preacher to be a burden to them. God sent you to be a blessing, not a burden. If you have problems, go back to the person who sent you. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? 
God called the 12 disciples. They walked with him. A day came, he said, now I'm going to send you. When he sent them, all of them came back rejoicing. They said, even the demons. There was a day he did not send them. Can you remember? They sent themselves. What happened that day? There was a day they sent themselves in the Bible. See, many of you don't read your Bible to learn. You just read it for education. There was a day they sent themselves. Jesus was at the Mount of Transfiguration. And they were happy. They said, bring, bring the epileptic patient. <laughs> Hallelujah. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. Say, Lord, say after me, Lord, no matter what it will cost me, I will pay the price for your glory. Say one more time, Lord, no matter what it will cost me, I will pay the price for the glory. You may pay the price when you are supposed to use your 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 money and buy cake for your birthday god tells you go and buy a christian book people come and meet you and say ah, happy birthday nothing for us you're not you know please i plan to celebrate many more birthdays there's nothing for now and they look they say you said this is your god you are talking about you just keep quiet hallelujah ladies you may not have any other shirt you may have only two shirts Wash one and iron it. No problem. Keep using the money to buy the books and the Bible and cry. Some of you need to add some serious desire for your life. Go and buy tapes and CDs. You have watched X-Men. You have watched all those films. When will you stop watching it? It's acting. Say after me, acting. Wake up from sleep and start. The Bible says, wake up, thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you life. There are many people sleeping. Get materials that will help your life. You hear me say this thing every time. A day will come, you will not hear this thing the way it is like this again. The Bible says in the days of Samuel, when the word of God was cast. There is no man that would deceive me into running away from the price I'm paying for the glorious future that I have ahead. Let me ask you a question. What price are you paying? Some of you, you are not paying anything. See, my father will pay it for me. Hmm. Have you heard that song? Your father may let you down. Sing it. Whatever you want to say, he will let you down as long as it's not Jesus Christ. I'm challenging you, saints of God. When you hear me preach like this with passion, don't just laugh. Don't just laugh. We are going to pray. Lord, I want your glory in my life. And if it's bitterness that will stop that glory, I die to bitterness. If it's unforgiveness, I die to it. If you must be the one to go and apologize to somebody who offended you, I die to it. What are you willing to pay for the glory? It won't come cheap. The miraculous is not cheap. Somebody met me one time and said, forget it. God is everywhere. I say yes. But his manifested presence with the anointing to perform is not anywhere. And if you doubt, I will call someone who is possessed right in your presence and leave you to struggle with the person. This is not pride. It's not everywhere. The beauty of success is that not everybody will have it. That's what makes it precious. The anointing is precious because not everybody is willing to have it. Brothers and sisters, there is a price to pay. The grace of God comes to enable you pay that price. There are some cups, no matter how you pray, it won't pass you by. You must drink that cup to the last drop. But when you drink that cup, you will arise with new strength. You will arise, you will mount up with wings like the eagles. Suddenly, the things that make ordinary men fall will keep you standing. You will walk on water and find yourself moving in glory. Do you know something? When that happens, 
you will only need to write just one book recording your experiences and it can give you enough financial benefits that all your job your life combined may not give you why because your experiences are a recording see i told you this last week that everything you are doing in the spirit has monetary value so don't you think you are losing hallelujah because there are many of us who are like the disciples of old you are saying lord i'm coming to koinonia every time what is my court in this thing are you the only one receiving glory i'm worshiping you every day i'm lying down i'm crying what is my own in this thing god is saying look at this is what i'm trying to get out of you but when he finds you i'm telling you listen 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 pass the test tell your neighbor pass the test the test of death jesus knew that he had to die he prayed and said father if it be thy will let this cup pass me some of you will need to break away from some wrong associations you've been praying and say lord is there another way of making all of them born again god said one day for now you must leave them there are many of you that it will cost you god will give you dangerous instructions go and empty your account and sow it in the house of god you have been binding for years god is saying i won't talk to you again until you do the last instruction I gave you. Tonight we are going to pray. And as you pray, many things will die in this place. Honestly. Many of you, some desires you've had. Many of you, some habits, many different things. Many of you, is your mouth. That coal of fire, your own, you don't need it touched. The whole coal must be put inside. And you wait there. And then your tongue is purified. Then you can speak to God. Hallelujah. Many of you have what the Bible calls a lying tongue. You exaggerate things, whether good or bad. You leave Koinonia and say, 90 cripples walked. Say, 90, say, huh? Tell you are 60. You, you are laughing. You need... These are the things that stop great men from being mighty. We are going to stand up. I'm saying this thing because when we start praying, don't look at me, look at God. We are not stopping soon. My desire is that for every one of us to be powerful, to be a friend of God. In the future, they will ask you, they will say, Esther, what did you do to attract the favor of God like this? You say, I won't lie to you. It's the grace of God, but come, let me show you. Hallelujah. You say, ah, Pastor Jakes lives in this big house. He didn't build it. And God will just slap your mouth and say, Were you there when he was fasting and praying? I asked you to fast. You said no. And I blessed him. Go and look for money and build your own. Since you think I'm stupid. Many of you think God is stupid. If God tells you leave every other thing and follow me. Let me tell you just follow him like a fool. If you can be foolish enough to follow God. You will be wise enough to enjoy the blessings of God. Ah. We're going to give all the children in this place biscuits. Protocol. Welfare. Is it available? Quietly just find all the children. If you have a child that's from 0 to 10 years, just lift your hands and they'll pass biscuits. We are talking about death now. You know what that means. If you are more than 10 years old, if you see any old hand that is a testimony of living long in this realm, just pass them welfare. We are going to pray. You need to die. You need to die. Many of us need to die. When you die, look at me. Criticism. You see, a dead man cannot respond to criticism again. There are many of you that are always quarreling. You are quarreling everybody in your room. And they are talking about me. I wake up by two. You are still alive to yourself, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Are you ready to pray? Rise up on your feet. I don't know how you are going to pray tonight but you are going to pray seriously please give this prayer your attention this is for your destiny you want to walk around go ahead and walk around we are going to pray
Hallelujah. The first prayer point is you're going to say, Lord, I desire your glory. I desire your glory in this mortal body. I desire your glory. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Help me, instruments. Kaposata kapalada bakaya. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Matoka posota la bakaya na banda kriata. I desire your glory. I desire your glory. A realm that no demon, no devil, no power in hell can stand. I desire your glory. Oh God, show me your glory. That was the prayer of Moses. Oh God, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Beyond the things I've known about you. Come on, walk around and pray like generals. Rakateko so prekete man pros kataya put your heart into this prayer tonight rekete posha le cross ko preke prekete man cross kataya i desire your glory i desire your glory i desire your glory man ta pros kete le koposo taya i desire your glory that I'll be a carrier of your glory. Are you praying tonight? Satoke Bosha, Rekete Kepa, Rapaskopaya, nothing, no one, no place. Make sure you're praying. Say, Lord, your glory. As in the days of old, show me your glory, O oh God. Show me your glory, O oh God. And I will shake the heavens and I will shake the earth. Koinonia pray tonight. Repo Shataya. Repo Kopiha. Lord, we cry for your glory. Greater levels of your glory. Of your glory. Of your glory. This is the generation that will travel until we burn the glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Rakata Baradabasha. Are you praying? Are you praying, generals? Rakata Bosa. Mam Prekete. I don't want anything else. I don't want anything else. Just your glory. Just your glory. For now, my priority is your glory. Not marriage. My priority. Not money. My priority. Not fame. Not power. Show me your glory. Show me your glory, O God. I don't want to be a good preacher. Show me your glory. All I need is your glory. Not ministry. Show me your glory. Show me your glory, O oh God. Some of you need to pray. The Spirit of God is in this place. Are I want to see your glory. Show me your glory, O oh God. Show me your glory. Show me what is forbidden for mortal eyes to see. Take me to realms beyond the natural. Take me on a journey in the spirit. Show me terrible things. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call on to me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things. Koinonia pray tonight. Show me your glory, O oh God. Show me.
me your glory, oh God. Beyond my personal ambition, pray. Beyond your academics, pray. Show me your glory. I tell you, when you find God's glory, you will find prosperity. You will find faith. You will find lifting. You will find favor. Cry for the glory tonight. Lord, we mean business with you tonight. We cry for your glory. Not church as usual. Not Christianity as usual. Take us to a new level. A new level. A new level of encounter. Rakata pakata pregere bele rebosa. Rakata pregere bala raba. Rakata pakata. Rapakata bala raba. Raposko pregete. Lekosko so pregete. Mamposko pregete. Lekete kete. Rapaka pusko kosa. Kapali kete kete. This is the generation of them that seek thy faith. Come on, generate energy in the spirit. Make sure you are praying in the Holy Ghost. Tonight don't be tired. This is for your destiny. This is for your destiny. This is for your destiny. As soon as Zion travel, as soon as Zion travel, show us your glory. Show us your glory. I want nothing more, nothing less your glory. I tell you the mighty presence of God is in this place. Shataka balada ba kapreke de balada ba. Zende prosko preke de balada ba. Your glory, we cry as a house tonight. Many of you do not know what the glory of God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me. Listen, the Bible says, seeing then, Hebrews 12 verse 1, that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. He said, let us therefore lay aside every weight. You are going to pray. Listen, this very prayer, take note, because the Holy Ghost is going to be walking on people one by one as you pray this prayer. Listen. You're, as you pray this, you will die to many things. Are you listening to me? The power of God is in this place. You will die to many things. For many of you, as you pray, you will find out that that loss will lift like a spirit from you. Some of you, that prayerlessness will lift that anger. So listen, in the next few minutes, if you want to work at whatever, just is you and God. Forget that you came for Koinonia tonight. Instrumentalist, help me. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. Are you ready now? Just the symbol. That's all I need. Just the symbol. Just the symbol. Lift your voice and pray. Saints of God. Let waves drop all God. Ma prosko pekele, rapa katosa, rakata pekete leke, meko prosko pa, ma poto kote kete, reke teke 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 mosa, rakata poko to pekete, meko prosko to reke teke teke, prosko pekete, ma poto mosa, ma poto mosa, rakata pekete, ma poto mosa, reke teke 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 teke
and it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted and all nations shall flow to it and upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness Hallelujah. Papa Koshu Palara Makana. Hallelujah. 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 And Moses said, If I have found favor in thy sight, show me your glory. What did Moses know about the glory of God? He didn't say, Make me a preacher. He didn't say, Make me a prophet. He didn't say, Give me money. He said, Show me your glory. Something tonight has broken in your spirit. Some of you tonight will begin your journey of total surrender. Honest surrender. There are some of you, you don't even need somebody to lead you to Christ now. Right where you are, you're already praying the prayer to be born again. Hallelujah. Listen. We're rounding up. Without the glory of God, we have no ministry. It is this glory that causes transformation. It is this glory that makes you a miracle worker. It is this glory that makes you immune. You are paying the price right now for the glory. These sufferings of this present time. You may look weak. You may in quotes be a failure. Your academics may not even be anything to write home about. But you watch what the glory of God can do in your life. The Bible says there is hope for a tree though it be cut down. He said at the scent of water. For some of you tonight, God has begun a walk with you that will carry you through until the miracle service. It's a dealing of the spirit. You cannot stop. It's a fire that has been ignited in your spirit. You will go back and people cannot explain what happened to you. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is what happens in Koinonia that sometimes people do not understand. How will someone just come and suddenly leave just one meeting with a degree of transformation you cannot explain it's not the man of god it's the glory of god this is why it is better for us to have only two people and have the glory than to have a stadium of people and lack the glory it is better for us to remain at the spiritual level we are and have the glory than rise to positions of greatness and fame without the glory. The worship team got it on the spot this night. I need you. Nothing. No place. That must be your decision. And that's the last prayer point tonight. You're going to say, Lord, truly. There are other things that have taken your place, but this night, I take you back to your position. There is nothing I cannot give you. Some of you need to think well before praying that prayer. Because there are things you cannot give him. Now say, Lord, finally I lay it down. Lift up your voice. 
anything that represents Isaac in your life, your fame, your reputation, is calling you tonight. Come on, pray. You are not yet a Christian until you can lay it down. Say, Lord, there is nothing I cannot give you. I've always been joking, but I mean it tonight. You mean all to me. I need you. I can give you my fame. My anointing can go. Marriage can go. Money can go. Nothing. Mean it from your heart. And no place. Take your place. That should be your prayer tonight. Ladies, pray. You especially. Take your place, oh God. What has taken your place in my life tonight? Take it back, oh God. What has taken your place? Take it back tonight. What has taken the fire? Lord, take it back. Kapato kabariata. For many of us, our lives are ikabod. The glory departed when you began to chase after things, chase after money, chase after people. For many of us, the testimony of our lives are ikabod. No more fire, no more prayer life. Your personal altar is dry, your world life is dry, your appetite for the things of the spirit tonight let there be a reignition a fresh fire for his presence you used to read books you love God you spent your money buying books when did you start concentrating on clothes beyond the things that brought you glory Come on, pray tonight. The Lord is taking his place. The Lord is taking his place. Some of you will literally feel like fire on your chest. Literal fire. Take your place tonight, oh God. Dethrone every idol that has stolen our prayer lives, stolen our world life, stolen the grace to walk in obedience. Restore us to the place of fire, the place of passion. Your conversation used to be everything of the spirit. But right now, all you concentrate on is carnal things that have no eternal value whatsoever. Cry tonight and say, Restoration, oh God. this is a solemn assembly tonight God is preparing us for the miracle service and for our lives you are alone with God in the next two minutes cry to God alone forget that you came for koinonia tonight cry and say your oh, glory Lord there's no pretending it again I'm crying don't let my fire go cold. Don't let my love for you go cold. Quit chasing titles. Quit chasing ministry. Quit chasing anointing. Pray. Exalt him above every devilish association exalt him above every church and every ministry for some of you your idol is church your idol is ministry you rather disobey God and obey your pastor and obey church said thou shall have no other gods above me Tonight is calling us higher. 
he that beareth fruit my father will prove pray just one minute and we'll round up come go with me behind the veil come go with me behind the veil Come go with me behind the veil. Come go with me. There is a higher realm than where you are standing. Come up here, the spirit is calling tonight. Come go with me beyond the realm you have seen. You have encompassed this mountain long enough. It's time to step higher in the spirit. You have been in this mountain long enough. Come up to the sea the spirit of God. Come go with me behind the veil. Come go with me I will reference you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reference. There is life everlasting. I will I'm going to make an altar call right now. There are some of you who need to run, not walk. Hallelujah. You've once given your heart to the Lord, but honestly, you know tonight in this family of faith that you need to begin a fresh journey or you've never made a decision for jesus someone even invited you tonight i'm just going to count three i want you to leave your seat and come out here quickly i want to agree with you and pray with you that you start a new experience one quickly if you're thinking about it just remain on your seat two This is my desire to honor you. As you stand here, just be praying. Don't look at me. Lord, with all my heart. It's just you and God alone. Forget about who is with you. I worship you. You're talking to your king and your maker. All I have within me tonight is time to address those ways i give you praise i took a balataya how that i adore is in you those of you in front here yeah, i like you to cry out your heart to him it's not a special number like the deer pants after the water I keep on for every breath that I say I'm for you. I'm for you. 
no matter what you have done hear me those of you in front no matter how far you have gone tonight i'm telling you the lord is embracing you he's telling you we can start afresh for there is now therefore no condemnation tonight i want you to begin a journey even if you are a pastor just forget about it for now let's begin a journey talk to the lord in one minute those in front talk to the lord if you think there's nothing to say go back to your seat but if you have something to say talk to the lord say lord i open my heart enough of church my sister that guy that always comes around to sleep with you send him a text this night bye bye go for good i bless you may you find the love of god hallelujah those of you in front here i'd like you to lift your hands as high as you can lift it so that you will not forget say after me lord jesus i love you with all my heart i come before you tonight to start afresh lord i'm sorry for my life tonight take me mold me use me i receive your life i denounce every sin and every weight that takes me away from god lord a fresh fire upon my life holy spirit reveal yourself to me let's begin a journey tonight make me a sign and a wonder hallelujah you will never regret this decision you will look at me forget about don't be ashamed of your tears this is a family this is where we all cry together you will never be the same never i assure you you met god tonight you will never be the same hallelujah now you're going to follow the ushers just in one minute we're out of time and they will have your details hallelujah by god's grace we'll have time and talk with you people will create time and we'll talk with you people counsel you just help you with some foundational truths you will never be the same i love you from the depths of my heart and i salute you for this great decision it takes the spirit of god to have brought you out hallelujah appreciate them celebrate them as they hallelujah hallelujah now you are worshiping with us for the very first time i want to pray a special prayer this doesn't come all the time but if you are worshiping with us for the first time please run and come out quickly this is your first time we want to bless you please quickly quickly we're out of time appreciate them koinonia those of you who invited them May the Lord keep inviting your destiny helpers into your life. Keep clapping, they are still coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Keep coming. We'll pray for you. Hallelujah. sister two of you there the power of god is coming on you right now as i'm talking the power of god is coming strong upon two of you you will never be the same there is a fire that is coming upon both of you i welcome you tonight this is koinonia our desire is to make sure people experience the reality of the holy spirit
Thank you so much for coming. The Lord brought you here by himself. I assure you, you will never be the same. This is not church. This is the revelation of the reality of the life of Jesus Christ. I want you to know we are going to pray for you. Hallelujah. For many of you, you will go back and be shocked at what has happened to your life. I assure you, this is a guarantee. Hallelujah. As we stretch our hands and pray for you, I'd like you to receive it into your spirit. This is not a formality. Saints of God, stretch your hands. Prophesy into their lives. We bless you with a hunger for the presence of God. We bless you with a passion for spiritual things. Let a fountain be created inside you that will make you desire God. Desire intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Whatever challenge you came here with, whether it's sickness or oppression, it leaves you completely. Whatever character flaw you came here with, you, you walk back a changed person. Your values change. Your appetites change. Complete transformation by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord bless them. Bless them. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.